Make sure to stand till the end because if you do a few things wrong, you can burn electronics module fuses and you can cause quite a bit of headache. Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Repair guys. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing to the channel. Today will be super helpful video to any of you having Dodge Jeep Chrysler with a 3.6 Pentastar engine. That could be anything. I'll just mention a few. Dodge Challenger, Charger, Durango, Journey, Dodge Ram, 1500 guys, Chrysler 300, 200, Dodge Avenger, uh, multiple uh, ones, Jeep uh, Wrangler, uh, Cherokee, Grand Cherokee as well. So if you have one of those and you're trying to uh, see how to test camshaft position, sensor that has four wires stabilizer will explain why it has four wires how to test it most camshaft position sensors have three wires so all that will be covered in this video today before we start let me tell you a little bit about us every single car we get here at the garage we try to make at least two to three hundred free repair videos why because our mission in the shop is to save you as much money as we can all we need guys in return please subscribe to the channel like the video that way we can keep making these free videos and we can keep saving you guys money uh, if you need to buy a new camshaft position sensor, parts, tools, check out the link in the description of the video below. That's where we get all our two supplies from and you can guys save a ton of money. So let's explain how to do that. We'll demonstrate on the left cylinder head known as bank one, but the right one will be the same as well. When you have the valve cover installed, you can see this is camshaft position sensor bank two for the second cylinder head. You will have four wires, you can even see them right here, wire one, two, three, four and why most camshaft position sensors have three wires this one has four due to the fact that actually this is two camshaft position sensors in one how you will find out okay you can see this is a dual variable timing engine you have two variable uh, timings on the camshafts on the intake and the exhaust which it can uh, advance or retard the timing but the engine computer engine computer will need to know the exact location of each one of those guys camshaft so that's why it uses camshaft position sensor on the left side we remove the valve cover we got to the uh, to everything here to show you how it works you can see this is the sensor itself and uh, that wheel right there is magnetic wheel okay that's magnetic wheel and we want to show you how you can test it you can do it without removing the valve cover but you will need to get a magnet so uh, now we have the wires connected with that thing where we don't actually cut the wires on wire one and two you will have uh, one of the wi uh, two wires on the right two on the left uh, for each sensor you can see this is uh, camshaft position sensor on the intake camshaft on the exhaust camshaft for this one you have two wires one is a five volt supply wire the other one is a five volt signal wire and the same thing for this one two wires now the five volt supply stays five volts all the time practically brings uh, brings current five volts to the sensor and returns it through the other wire and when you touch it to a magnet that should switch to zero okay it will stop the communication of the wire so how we can test it we get the voltmeter we have it connected to the uh, right two wires okay and if you check the connector here it says wire one and two okay over there guys this is wire one and two and uh, this is for the right camshaft position sensor that's the one that we'll be testing we'll go inside okay and we'll turn the ignition switch on okay car being it's been in a little bit of an accident here so turn the ignition switch on two second position on your dodge jeep crasher car make sure the dash lights come on we come right here okay careful not to cut myself on glass and if i come right there guys let me show you now okay on our voltmeter here we get five volts and if we come guys okay let's see let's see now if we come close to the wheel hold it there zero volts remove it only certain positions of the wheel are magnetic so we need to find that position okay just come with the sensor zero volts okay five volts let's go again zero five okay well sometimes if you go too fast it will uh, change polarity and it will go to five when you get it close so that's why always come to it and wait okay and now we pull uh, you come close okay it's right here that's where the magnet is five Z zero here okay five so it needs to be contacting good five so now if i try this sensor here on this side it doesn't work check it out 
Okay, I actually got the other one, but okay. Because if you come too close with this one, it will still read it. So I'm going to the other side now. I'm going to switch the wires from wire 1 and 2 to wire 3 and 4. I recommend to always have the ignition turned off. Even in some cases, the car battery disconnected. So let me go ahead, switch wires. Okay, that's switched. We go to wire number 1. Uh, to our number four, excuse me. Come on. Okay, five volts. Did I get it or I moved it? Okay, I moved it. One second. Okay, 5 volts on the reader here, 5 volts, check it out, and now if we come right here close to the wheel, 0, 5, 0, you can come to that wheel and test them here too, 0, okay, 5, 0. So, you can see this is a good working sensor, guys. Hopefully, guys, the video will be helpful to any of you need any help with that. Thank you guys for watching and see you next time.